that they do. They make it so crazy that people go, that doesn't make any sense, therefore I'm going to defer to uh, the experts because I can't figure it out. The reason you can't figure it out is because you can't figure it out because it's stupid. Hello, it's March 2024 and I'm going to be discussing something more along the lines of what I've been covering for the past decade with my efforts and reflect on something that I discussed many, many years ago. And I'm going to start with the most extreme example and then work my way down to what some might perceive as a less extreme example to set the stage. Now take for example we look at people who are murderers and they in their minds justify their actions. And you, you can apply this to any extreme crime. The key is they justify their actions and their actions have obviously the most extreme consequence and that is taking someone from life. Now we have for example somebody who may be very angry and for that moment, and they justify their actions and again, take someone out of life. You can just tangent for a moment there and someone who unintentionally takes someone out of life, but the end result is still there. And both these examples, actually all three examples so far, have a lifelong devastating impact on everyone's life that was part of that person's life who's no longer. Extreme examples. Now, tone it down a little bit. You might have someone who doesn't take someone out of life but they become violent and for example they beat somebody now there's different degrees of beating but imagine a very extreme example now although they haven't taken someone out of life that whole event depending on the injuries which can be life lasting which has a life long effect on that individual and this is going to be the theme now remains if there's no lifelong injuries then you know maybe it's just slapping back and forth and it's over then it's over there's no lifelong impact on anyone and I want to now go into verbal again no lifelong impact however and I'm not going to get into this part but even when you say something mean to someone it will impact them and it yes it is possible depending on the person and what buttons are pushed or whatever it could have a lifelong impact I'm not dismissing that that's reality but just to say two people are having a disagreement, words are exchanged, and I'm not condoning that, I'm just saying. But all these events so far, people in their minds can justify. But with the exchange of words, everyone walks away, no lifelong impact. You know, maybe some egos might be bruised. That's about it. And in the most mild scenario, you can have people, again, say disagreeing on something. For example, pineapple on pizza. And 
no words exchanged, but there's just that disagreement and life goes on. But now, to make the point. In today's world, we look at the most extreme examples that I started off with, working down to the lesser, and we say that is terrible. We, as a society, are not going to accept that. Now, we've gone to the extreme with, for example, disagreeing, where it's exchanged or not, that is unacceptable, which is ridiculous. And that's all part of the social justice nonsense that we live in today. But imagine being in a position that you can have lifelong devastating effects on an individual whether it be taking them from life or just impacting them that their lives are ruined. They're ruined mentally, physically, and professionally. Keeping them in the worst state for the rest of their life. These people who are in those positions, when it's over, they just walk away, carry on with their life, and chances are they forget about what they did to someone. And that someone who they impacted, everyone in that person's life is also being impacted. Family, friends, associates, whatever. Everyone's impacted. And because as a descriptive this person's life was completely destroyed, again, mentally, physically, professionally. And sometimes it can chip away at someone spiritually, but that's a different tangent. These people carry on, forget about what happened, and perhaps keep doing this to others because they have that as a descriptive power over someone. Now, when you destroy someone's life to the point where they're just merely existing physically, mentally, no professionally because they can't, for example, get a job reflecting their education or their career history or anything. They can't do anything. They're completely destroyed. We're going to use the example with law. Someone is wrongfully convicted. And they can't do anything. We as a society need to stop and pay attention to this because we can look at the extreme examples that I mentioned before and say that is unacceptable, but yet no one really pays attention to the same effects done without, for example, violence or exchange of words the abuse of power. On May 4th, 2013, minutes after 11 p.m., I was sitting in a park with a female I know for... He runs to the back of my vehicle, and then as he's running back to the other cop, all I hear him saying is, yeah, that is, or that's. Meanwhile, she's grabbed my right arm and repeating, don't let them hurt me. And I'm trying to think, what? the hell is going on right now he's charging towards me like a bull in a china shop line 11 is clear I could have driven away at any time when they arrived they gave no reason to me what was going on thus I could have left if I wanted to we as a society need to stop 
and pay attention to this because we can look at the extreme examples that I mentioned before and say that is unacceptable, but yet no one really pays attention to the same effects done without, for example, violence or exchange of words, the abuse of power. None of it makes sense for the person, the victim of this abuse of power. And this abuse of power can come from anyone in any position of authority. The most common example we see, for example, I'm not picking on police officers, but there's good and bad in any profession. But we can see that from there, dealing with lawyers, prosecutors, judges, even transfer that into the prison systems and everything else, this abuse of power. And being condoned by as a descriptive politics. Now, when I look at my story that took place in Calgary, Alberta, and I look back on how it started, and I've always tried to figure out, well, what was really going on? And it just seemed like to be like a domino effect and somebody who I probably upset, angered, frustrated, whatever, talking about what I knew firsthand, took the opportunity to use, for example, the female to try to get to me. And now these are the types of people, even the busybodies that I've highlighted over the many, many years, who walk away hands clean but yet they've gotten to someone they've used others in positions of authority to do what they couldn't do and they scurry away and then in time again they forget about that maybe pops into their mind once in a while and they feel good about themselves because hey they got to someone destroyed someone and when I look at the injustice for example and everything that was being imposed these people either don't see the long term effects because perhaps they became angry say in my case because I was standing up for my innocence providing a plethora of independent evidence to support it, even supporting the defects in the case against me, and that upset them, upset many people. Or they don't care about the long-term effects on the individual because they get to be protected from any wrongdoing carry on with their lives. Look at the two former police officers that are central to my story. They just carry on with their lives, found different jobs, careers, one's in sales and the other one getting in trouble while being a private investigator, which is a reflection on their character. And I'm just going to segue for a moment. I've mentioned how, in some comments not too long ago, where I've made some reply comments to, or in a post or something, and how people from opposing sides, reading my same comments, come up with opposite conclusions on where I'm coming from or what I'm trying to say. And we see the same thing for example, in law. And then we get into opinions and everything else, and I've discussed all that. But as a society, we need to look at the busybodies, 
We need to look at the people who use authority types to fulfill their agenda. We need to look at authority types who have their own agenda, imposing, for example, injustice or, on the higher level, tyranny, which anyone, including you, can be a victim of. And we need to see how these people can destroy lives and say, this is not acceptable. But that's a little bit too hard because people have become not only bored in civilization, but lazy. And I'm just going to close off how I notice how the common person, most people, will, will stand up to defend someone who's actually guilty but not so much when someone's innocent and that's a reflection of society and this is where we are today so I really want you to think about if say someone who takes someone from life or permanently injures them and compare that to as a loose descriptive someone who can destroy someone's life and impact their future and everyone around them using law and say what's really the difference because it's the same end result anyway thank you for watching please like subscribe comment and share Doesn't make sense. Thank you. You like doesn't make sense? Because it's stupid. Because it's stupid. Because it doesn't make sense. This is what we're doing. Listen to this and write it down if you can't remember it. You're never going to outgrow warfare. You simply must learn to fight. I hear people saying to me, oh, when is it going to get easier? When you die.